In 75, Van Thuan was appointed by Pope Paul VI as uh, Archbishop Gorgeous of Saigon. And um, at that time, Saigon was in a great turmoil. Obviously, there was um, the communists exalting themselves, you know, in victory. And in the midst of that, millions of people are trying to get out of Vietnam through the last uh, commercial flights and through fishermen boats. And the clergy was really in disarray, not knowing what will happen to them. He knew that the communist government would never accept him to be in Saigon. But he headed for Saigon at the time when the, the, the highways are still unsecure. And when he arrived in Saigon, there was nobody to receive him, to welcome him. He knew that there was trouble. Ngày 15 tháng 8, 1975, nhằm lễ Đức Bà hồn xác lên trời, là một ngày không thể quên được trong cuộc đời của tôi. Và tôi đã bị bắt ở trong dinh độc lập, trở trên xe, đi trong đêm tối về Nha Trang lúc 12 giờ đêm, một quãng đường tối tam thực nhưng mà tôi vui vẻ bởi vì tôi thấy tôi bắt đầu một bước đường gian lao trong một ngày lễ của đức mẹ Francis Xavier Wen Van Thuan was born in 1928 in Phu Can, a largely Catholic suburb of Hue in central Vietnam. He was born into a prominent Catholic family with deep ties to the Vietnamese martyrs. Như là lịch sử của giáo hội tại Việt Nam á đã nói rõ là giáo hội Việt Nam được sinh ra ở bằng máu đào của các thánh tử vi đạo Việt Nam á. Thì từ đầu giáo hội Việt Nam đã bị cấm cách và cái cảnh này đã đã kéo dài ba ngã ba thế kỷ và và thế kỷ tất cả và chúng tôi có tới hơn 300.000 người vị tử đạo dưới trong suốt ba thế kỷ này. Van Thuan has always thought that his vocation, his life has been a grace of God directly linked, intimately linked to the blood of the martyrs. We come from a family where on my mother's side my grandfather Ngô Đình Khá's family, the entire village, including his family, was burned alive in the church during worship. And my grandfather was overseas at the time and escaped that. Having survived the martyrdom of his family, Ngô Đình Khá became the heir of a spiritual legacy. But he would also be driven by a political dream of a free and independent Vietnam. He served as the Grand Chamberlain of the court under Emperor Tan Tai and took a principled stand against French colonial rule in Vietnam. Of all his children, it was his daughter Elizabeth who best understood his ideals. Elizabeth was a woman of strong faith, which she passed on to each of her ten children, but in a special way, to her eldest son, Tuan. My mother has always told us, each one of us, it doesn't matter what you do, Every moment is offered to God because every moment belongs to God. Thuan took that extremely, extremely seriously. And it was that that kept him, you know, sane and kept him in union with God in prison. And he took his entire focus on the present moment and lived that to the limits of his ability to love God. <laughs> 